Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. We're back today with another exciting adventure in the land of Dino. Dino, Dino, Dino. I'm having a lot of fun playing around with Dino, so much so that I actually even made a playlist on my YouTube channel all about all these Dino videos. Today's video is going to be delving into the world of testing in Dino. Uh, the one caveat that I want to say before we get too far into this is that this is using Dino 0.35.0. So if you're watching this video in the future, somewhere out there, uh, it might have changed. There's already talk of kind of changing parts of how you write tests with Dino to make it a little bit easier to use, but I'm going to show you kind of the state of the world as it is right now with Dino. I don't think it's going to change drastically, but it might change a little bit. Uh, and we're going to be using our experiment, a little... Uh, library that we've been building together, Dencro. I know that you've all been enjoying watching this develop. Uh, we're using Dencro as our little test subject to actually write some tests with Dino. So I'm going to stop talking and start typing. So tests. Ah, what a lovely word. Let us see how we can write some tests with Dino. Dino has a built-in command. Uh, if you do Dino test, it's a built-in command. You can look at help. Let's expand this. This is a built-in test runner built into Dino. So a test runner is what you think of when you think of Mocha or Jest. Mocha is both a test runner and a test framework. So is Jest. Uh, Dino has kind of those things built in as well. So it has a built-in test runner that looks for all files that end in underscore test.ts or underscore test.js. And here's some additional, the usual bunch of additional permissions you can enable for Dino when writing tests. Now, I personally always like to see an example of tests when I write them to actually have a kind of an idea of what I'm doing. And when you go to the Dino, oops, wrong clicky clicky. When you go to the Dino uh, manual and you search for tests, first thing that shows up here is this one little... It's, it's part of this example of linking to third-party code, but it shows in here an actual example of a test, uh, which is good enough for me. So can I actually copy this? Let's actually make this new file. Uh, for now, I'm just going to call it test.ts. I'm going to paste this in here. Uh, I want this to be at 35, because that's what I'm using. I'm going to save that. And now, if I run Dino tests, look at that. It's running our tests T1 and T2. Now you can see here I'm importing from the standard library the testing uh, package. So I go into uh, standard and I go on to testing. I can see here the testing library and this is where you actually provide all of the utilities for making assertions. These are all these assertion helpers. You can see some examples here. There's three ways that you can actually write a test with Dino. There's the long form way where you pass in an object into the dino.test uh, function, where you can give it a name and the function. There's the short syntax where you pass in a function and the name of the function is what's shown up in the Dino console. And that's what we're using here, T1, T2. So that's what we're saying, T1, T2. So if I said, uh, hello world, I save that and then run this, it'll change to hello world. Now it's kind of fun, a little aside here. Uh, if you go to uh, the manual, look at test. Uh, what's fun is that I've been preparing for this video and this code right here was actually recently changed because a pull request was merged in Dino itself. Uh, Dino, the repo, a little pull request got merged, correcting a little documentation error there by no other than yours truly, moi, <laughs> where I opened a, my first PR on Dino to just change some documentation. So doing my part to make things better. So you're welcome, people. Uh, so this is running tests. This is all good. Uh, there's a many things to do, assert match, assert equals, trick equals, all the things that you'd usually expect in an assertion framework. Um, what I'm going to do today is actually make tests for, uh, Dencro right over here. We got Dencro, uh, in case you don't remember how it works, if I can run it, I'm gonna run it like this. 
example is the directory linking to here and of course it's serving up things as expected cool so i want to just write some tests for this because tests are generally a good idea generally um and i'm gonna have to actually i'm actually going to change my code a little bit to make it easier to write some tests uh, one of the first things i actually want to test here is this uh, get handler path which is how the magic works of translating a request URL into a real path on the file system. Um, am I going to have to change directory here? So this might be a little bit trickier to test because when I first start up the test, I'm actually changing the working directory of Dino for lack for better or for worse. Um, I'm wondering if full path, real path. Hmm, how's the best way to test this? Let's see what happens when we just export this. Save that, and then we can go into here and we can import uh, what, I, what I call it get handler path from index.ts. So now if we make this async. If I call, uh, let's just do console log to kind of get an idea of what's going to be in here. I'm going to call it with slash about. Now if I run Dino you know, test, it's yelling at me because I need the allow net flag, which, okay, sure. Allow net, oops, allow net. Oh, well, that's fun. So it seems like when I first import the script, it's going to immediately start trying to run the code because that's what I'm doing here. This is all just a top level function. So that doesn't really make it testable. So let's actually bring this down to another function where we're gonna have, um, so essentially all the logic here moves into a function. We're gonna call it async um, create denpro. Like that, we'll save it, and then we can always, of course, do create Dencro. But I only want to run Dencro because, again, if I run this again, it's going to keep starting the server. Uh, uh, no such file or server. That's fine. Let's make sure that it still works. I didn't break anything. This is still working as expected. Yes. Yes, it is. But I actually don't want to start this server unless I'm actually running this from the command line. And because I've stared at this page many a times, I know that I can test if current file is the main program. So this is what I want. I want to just only run create Dencro if I'm running this as itself, just like that. So let's see. That's running. Now let's do Dino test. And we got a failure. This is as expected. Okay, so we're actually running the test now. So things are working as expected where this is failing because there's no such file or directory here, which is from here, which makes sense. So if I were to do uh, example slash about and run that, that works because it's a relative directory from the root of the file, because if I'm going into example slash about, it should give me the file example slash about.ts. So it's translating that correctly, uh, which I'm fine with for now. So let's say, we're gonna say, um, we're gonna test this, we're gonna test, oops, we're gonna test get handler path. We're just gonna use the uh, example here, so we're gonna have some mm, assert equals, and this is actually just asserting that the code is working as it currently does, because I've never really written tests before. So this should get handler path of the full file, right? And that's what it's doing. So this is getting this full path, which is not a really great test because uh, it's gonna fail on somebody else's computer. Um, does this work? Expected zero arguments, but got one. Oh, test, get handler path. Don't want to rename that. 
If I test it, it's working as expected, which is great. So this is a very, uh, how do I test this better? Because that's just a really weird test to have. Like this is not gonna pass on a CI environment because it's very specific to my local environment. Uh, that sucks. That'd be tricky to actually do a full thing of. But just for uh, right now example purposes, let's do another test. Uh, we'll do a hello, example slash hello, and there should be hello slash index, right? If that works correctly. And it's not failing, so if I do index two, that should then fail. Right, index two, cool. So that's working as expected. I'll have to come back in my own free time on how to actually uh, write this in a way that's resilient. I'm not gonna spend your time doing that. Let's talk about another harder thing to test though. Let's talk about how we actually test the surfer itself. So actually I'm gonna commit this right now because I actually like have it. What happened, what did I do? There we go. I actually like um, toggle this. I like having this broken up into a function where I have create dencro as just a function so it can both be used from the CLI but also um, both from the CLI but also as like a module. I actually like that. So let's do this. So let's say um, move most of the top level code into create dencro or should I just rename this something? Uh, we'll just call it create or start server. What would you prefer? Oh, naming is the hardest thing. Um, create server. We'll call it that. Create server, nice and generic. We'll apply those changes as there into create server. Cool. So that's there and that's good. Now, how can we test starting up the server and then making requests to it to make sure that it works as expected? This is going to be a little bit fun. Uh, let's do test uh, server. We're just going to test the actual server itself. So we're going to import, so we'll export create server. Where is it? Create server right here. We'll export create server and we'll import it here. Create server. And then here what we're going to do is we're going to make this async as well. And we're going to say await create server. And then what we want to do is actually make a request to a path. So we're going to say await. So let's say request equals await fetch. Uh, we're going to do slash about. We'll do slash hello for now. And then we actually want to call text on it because we're returning text right now. And we want to get the uh, body text. What is it? Text or it's body. We want body and we want to get uh, text. There we go. Just like that. So then this, we'll console log that there, right there. So this should be, so if I start the server right now, just to show you what I'm expecting it to be. So if I start the server and I go to uh, slash hello, I'm expecting this, I'm expecting this request value to be hello to we. That's what I'm expecting. So let's see if that works. If I run Gino test. Oh, well, that's not good. It's just serving the server. Uh, that's not helpful at all. Uh, we actually don't, we want it to start the server then still let us actually call things. So I'm actually gonna break this down into two parts where I'm gonna have the create server which is going to return, I'm going to have one part which is create server and one part which is actually um, listen for requests. So this is the part where we create the server. And this is the part where we actually listen for requests and actually handle them. So I'm actually going to yank most of this. I'm going to do uh, export async function, uh, listen for requests. And I'm going to put that into there. And then this needs the server. So I'm going to do S, which is a server, like that. And then this has to return a server, which to do that, I'm going to have it do it right there. Which means that here, I can have it be const server equals await server. And then 
uh, what did I call this? Listen, listen for requests, server, like that. So if I were to run this again, to make sure I didn't break anything, args port, listening at port. Uh, let's just move this up here for now. Oops. Uh, args. Why is this yelling at me again? Save that. Server. Oh, because it returns a promise for the server. There we go. And then here, for now, I'm just going to move the args out. And I can deal with args at a later point. So let's try running this again. Cool. So it's listening. Refresh that. It's working as expected. Cool. So that's working as expected. Things are good. So now what I can do is I can import create server, which I already have. Import listen for requests. Like that. So here I get the server. And what I'm going to say is I'm not going to wait for listen for requests, but I'm going to start listening for requests. So listening for requests like that. Let's save that. And let's try running these tests. Relative URL without a base. So let's add a base. HP colon slash slash localhost itty itty. And let's try again. Hello and zero. Server listening from this. Couldn't, error, no handler. Oh, here we go. So we're going to do this to make sure I know what I'm actually logging. Request, error, no handler for hello. And that's because, again, uh, over here, I'm not changing the base path. I'm not actually starting the server with the correct arguments. Um, where, where is it? So this, these args.length. So actually, let's start this with args. So we're going to have this args equals like this. Well, this is not going to go well. Essentially, the problem is that when I'm starting the server, I'm passing in the um, example folder to say that's where I should be serving from, but I haven't really exposed the way to do that yet. I'm not going to spend your time with this here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, just cheat for now, just for the example purposes. And I'm going to add this example to say switch to that folder. So now when I run this, fingers crossed, it's running correctly. So the request is hello to we hello. So now what I can actually do, now that I have this text, is say the request should equal, oops, oops, <laughs> request should equal that. So let's go here, let's kill that, try running it. It works! Huzzah! So we're testing actually the server, and I can add more tests here, which I will do offline, but that's kind of the general idea of adding some tests and, you know, just running them, which is awesome. If I clean this up a little bit, let's clean this up a little bit. I can also add to clean it up so that the uh, server is not logging things out. There's a lot of cleanup to do, but again, I'm not going to just, like, code. I just want to give you a basic idea about how you can actually have some tests running with Dino. So that is running tests with Dino. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Pretty straightforward. It's kind of great to have. I just love that Dino has so many things built in by default. So you don't have to actually go out and like look at the ecosystem and see what should I use. Should I use Mocha, Jest, Ava, like so many things to actually decide. Dino's like, nah, I got you. Use this and you're good. Very easy to use. Great defaults built in. I can only imagine it's going to get better. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I enjoyed playing it, sharing that with you. And I'm going to keep on working for more things in the coming weeks with Dino. And until then, I will wait a week to see your face again, most likely. But if you're not a subscriber, become one. And be sure to tell everyone about the videos, because hopefully you enjoy watching them. And with that, I will see you again next week with a new video. Bye!